in God and you don't have this sense of commitment. And Bible gives an idea of commitment. What is the meaning of the word abide? It means to, to remain stable or fixed in a state of love and, 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 and in a state of love that abideth with him all the days and abides me to be stable. Now, now there's no stability without commitment. Hallelujah. There can be no stability without commitment. In order for there to be stability, there can to be commitment. No stability without commitment. A lot of reasons why people are not stable is because they don't want to be committed. And once you are stable, it gives a sense of commitment. Unstable people are uncommitted people. People who are unstable are very often people who are not committed. They jump from here to there, they jump from one relationship to another relationship, they jump from one job to another job, they jump from one location to another location, they jump from one community to another community, they jump from they, 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 they just jump, 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 jump because they lack the sense of commitment. Amen. So to to to, to abide me to be stable and to, to or to fix in the state of love and abide. It. Abide me to continue in the place. To continue in the place. Be there. Come here to have water and you'll still be there. Amen. Come trials and test you will still be there. It, 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 it means to be in a place. It, it means you are stable. You come here and you don't move it no matter what. I don't care what they say. I will still be here. I don't care what they do. I will still be here. I don't care who does what, who says what. I will still be here. I don't care how it looks like. I will still be here. I don't care how I feel. I will still be here. I will still be here. And then I hear Job. When Job said, I will wait until I change now. Job said, you don't know. I will be committed to this God. Don't you slay me. I will wait. I don't care what my friends say. They can say I'm living in sin. They can say I've done this. I don't care what they say. I'm not going to say anything negative. I will be here. There where? Still holding on to his subjective hand. Don't he slay me? Joe says, but yet I will wait. Don't he slay me? Yet I will trust him. And I will wait until I change God. That's what I buy means. It means to be stable. It means to be in a place. Hallelujah. To be in a place. People who, who don't abide are people who are not stable. Are people who are not committed. And so they move from one place to another. The, 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 the reason why a lot of people can be committed to choice because they don't want to be committed to paying time and offering. The reason why a lot of people don't be committed to church because they don't want to be committed to, 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 to the work of God. That I know, you know, I gotta watch my son go give my son on Saturday. And so if I commit myself, Saturday I gotta go to church, I gotta go for practice, I gotta go for this. So I can't commit myself because then I won't be watching my son come back. People are not committed because they lack stability. And you can't be stable if you're not committed. And in order for you to be stable and be committed, you must abide. Amen. To abide and to be in a place. Amen. It means to conform to or to abide by the rules. Abide and to conform to. To conform to. To abide by the rules. Hallelujah. To abide by the rules. Abide means to accept without rejection. Accept without rejection. You accept without rejection. I don't care what people say. I believe that you is God. I don't care what they say. They can call me off and ask me, but I'll keep falling after God. I will keep speaking unto God. I don't care what they say. This is where I belong and I will be here. Amen. It means to accept without objection. It means to agree. And for you to be willing to abide by your decision. I don't care what people say, I'm not going to change. You really want to be, yes, I want to be there. You really want to serve God, yes, I want to serve God. You really want to go on a mission field, yes, I want to go on a mission field. You really want to do, yes, you, you stay by your decision. That's why it makes you abide. You don't change that. Nobody come and play on you and think that it's smarter than you and say, Well, oh, maybe I got to rethink. No, I'm not rethinking anything. I have saved. I'm born watching the blood of Jesus. I got no apology for 
being a Christian? Are you sure you want to be a Christian? Yes, I'm more than sure I want to be a Christian. Are you sure you want to preach the gospel? Yes, I want to preach the gospel. Are you sure you want to serve God? Yes. No one influences your decision. And that's what it means to a Stay by your decision. I don't care how tough it becomes. You don't go around and say, you know what? I think I made a mistake. No, I didn't make a mistake by serving God. I didn't make a mistake by being a Christian. I didn't make a mistake by choosing to preach the gospel. No matter how tough I time it becomes, I did not make a mistake. I don't care who, who goes with me. If nobody goes with me, I will still follow. I didn't make a mistake. That's what it means to buy. Hallelujah. That's why they need to abide. And so if today we want to take a few minutes and I want to talk about, look at the believer's relationship with Christ. The believer, you as a believer, Christians, believer people who are called, or who call themselves believers, who want to look at their relationship with Christ. Specifically, we want to put our attention more on what it means to abide in Christ. What it means, Jesus said, except you abide in me. Now, and I like the way he put it. He didn't say, even in verse 7, that's also going to go on verse 7. He said, if you abide in me, and, and, and he didn't say, if I abide in you, no. He said, if you abide in me, and my word. He didn't say, not in verse 7, verse 7, he didn't say, if you abide in me and I abide in you. He said that in the previous verse. But in verse 7, he said, if you abide in me and my word, abide in you. Amen. My word, abide in you. The man called Arthur Pink. This is how Arthur Pink. Define this definition of abide. What it means to abide in Christ. This is Atopic definition. He said, first, to abide in Christ is to continue in the joyful recognition of the value of his perfect sacrifice. And the efficiency of his pressure, and the efficacy of his pressure blood. That's how he defined that part. He said, first and foremost, to abide means to continue to buy Christ means to continue in a joyful recognition of the value of his death and sacrifice. So in other words, what causes me to want to abide in Christ? The thing that causes me to want to abide in is that I first of all will recognize the value of his perfect sacrifice. The value of his perfect sacrifice. And the efficacy of his precious blood. Secondly, being says to abide in Christ, being says. Is to maintain a spirit and an attitude of entire dependency on Him. Being says to abide in Christ means to maintain. It is to maintain a spirit and an attitude, maintaining a spirit and an attitude of dependency. Him. Amen. Maintain the spirit and an attitude. Turn pieces to abide in Christ is to draw from his fullness. To abide in Christ is to draw from his fullness. Are you with me? Jesus said in verse 7, He said, If you abide in me, He didn't add, and I abide in you. No, He didn't add that. He said, If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. In other words, what does Jesus say? Jesus is saying, If my teaching so I abide with you, I shall control your thoughts and your ideas. Remain in you as your guide. Watch it. Not because I, 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 
people many times go there and, and you know, and, and uh, they think sometimes it's automatic. No. Notice in verse 7, Jesus said, If you abide in me, not, not me, not if you abide in me and abide, no, he didn't say so. He said, If you abide in me, and my word abide in you, what does he mean? What he's mean is, in my teaching, abide with you. And in my teaching, in abiding with you, control your thoughts and your ideas. In my teaching, remain in you as your guide and inspiration. He said, then ask. So, until the word of God, the teachings of God, abide with you. Until you are controlled by the word of God, until your thoughts and your ideas are controlled by the word of God, and until you remain in the word of God, remain as a guide and an inspiration to you, that scripture doesn't apply to you. I repeat that. Jesus said in verse 7, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you. And it's interesting. All the Lord Jesus has been saying, if you abide in me, and I abide in you. But in verse 7, he said, no, if you abide in me, and my word abide in you. In other words, he's saying to you, if it's my word, my teachings, he said, they abide in you. And because they abide in you, it, it is controlling your thoughts and your ideas. If my word remain as a guide and an inspiration, that's what the psalmist says. The psalmist says, Your word is like a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In other words, the psalmist says, Your word shows the way for me. And Jesus is saying, If my word is showing the way for you, if my word is controlling your thoughts and your ideas, if my word is he said, then ask. Then ask. If my word is not controlling you, if my word is not inspiring you, if my word is, 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 is not controlling you and inspiring your thoughts and your ideas, forget it. Amen. He said, forget it. And that is the key of our Christianity. That is the key of our Christian life. The word of God, the commitment, our commitment to the word of God. When we commit ourselves to the word, the word controls us, the word guides us, the word inspires us. And if the word controls you, if the word inspires you, if the word guides your thoughts and your ideas, if the word inspires you, he says, then ask. Ask. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever you will. Why? Because the word that I speak in a spirit in your life. And if this word is inspiring you, if this word is controlling you, if you are living by this word, if you committed to this word, if you are staying in abiding in without objection to this word, you say, ask anything, and we give it up to you. Hallelujah. And I see a lot of people live erroneously. And sometimes people have that. There's this, this the new theology of claiming it and meaning it. I claim it. What are you claiming? Meaning and claiming. No, 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 no. This is the word God says. He said, if my word abide in you, if you abide in me, first he says you must abide in me. And my word must abide in you. What is the responsibility? What is the essence of the word abiding in you? God, my word is going to control you. My word is going to inspire you. It's going to control your thoughts. It's going to control your mind. Whatever you do, whatever you say, whatever you act, how you live, is guided and controlled by my word. So he said, in other words, if my word is in charge of your life, then ask. Whatever you will, then ask. What if, if my word is leading you, if my word is controlling you, if my word is guiding you, ask why? Because the word of God is God Himself. The word of God is God Himself. God and His word cannot be separated. If you are controlled by the word, you control by God. If you guided by the word, you guided by God. If you are inspired by the word, you
you are inspired by God. He says, so the man controlling you, the man inspiring you, the man carrying you, your thoughts and your ideas, the man controlling you, he said, then ask. Nothing can happen you ask. You know, we can live rebelliously and then ask. No, it doesn't work. We can live rebelliously and ask. No, 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 no. He said, my word was abide. That's what's so different. Abide means to accept without rejection. Am I talking to somebody? Abide in me. My word in you. He said, ask. Ask. Oh my God. Ask. Well, when God gave a blank check, but He doesn't give a blank check on a blank note. He gave a blank check with a condition. Amen. The condition is that the world must be in control. Amen. The world must be in charge. Amen. The world must inspire you. The world must lead you. The world must guide you. Your thoughts and your ideas. Think like God. Act like God. Speak like God. He said, then ask whatever you will. Hallelujah. Ask whatever you will. You can ask, but if you ask it in disobedience, you cannot. You can ask, but if you're not asking and the word is not abiding in you, you are not. We're not talking about the hearers of the word, we're talking about doers of the word. He's not talking about the hearers of the word, he's talking about the doers of the word. God said, I can see myself in you. Uh-huh. Then ask whatever you will. Yes. That's what he's saying. Yeah. He said, I can see myself in you. Yeah. Ask whatever you will. Because for the word of God to abide in me means that God is abiding in me. For the word of God to leave my ideas, my thoughts, and control me, it means God is leading me, guiding me, and controlling me. So God says, if I can see myself in you, ask whatever you will. The rest will be given unto you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ask whatever you will, and it shall be given unto you. Oh, my son, I've learned that. I've learned, I've learned that God has shown me that you know what? It is not difficult to receive. All you need to do is to allow me to be and lead you, to guide you, to control you. You can be on your own and ask me. You can be on your own and want me to do stuff for you. If you want to live by yourself, live by yourself. But I'm not going to do anything for you. He said, if you want me to be in charge, then ask. If I'm not in charge, don't ask. Too many people are asking, and God is not in charge. Listen, the devil too can answer prayer. Let nobody fool you. People think the devil doesn't answer prayer. The devil do answer prayers. Amen. He answers. It's not every good thing comes from God. Not because he sees nice, so it's not from God, no. But you know, every good thing comes from God, you know that. But the enemy comes in disguise. Hallelujah. So I, I, I just want to maybe talk, you know, talk a few of them. I mean, I, I said they don't have to finish it. But, but let's look at, let's look at some, some, some of the benefits of abiding in Christ. Some of the benefits of abiding, remaining, staying in Christ. Well, we see all the benefits in verse 7. If you abide in me and my word, this is our, yeah, this is our mama commitment to the word. When we commit ourselves to the word, we commit ourselves to God, and we commit ourselves to God. Listen to me. Why do people get paid? Because they're committed to their job. Everyone who's not committed to their job gets fired. The people pay you because of your commitment. You come to work and you do your work, that will pay you. They don't pay you because you can't dress nicely. They don't pay you because you wear nice clothes. They don't pay you because you brought up big cattle. They pay you because you committed. Stay away one month, you're fired. Hallelujah. Stay away one month, you fire. It's commitment. Abiding. You see? One of the first benefits of abiding in Christ is, is that abiding in Christ is a means of fullness of joy. Amen. When you abide in Christ, you become a recipient of the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. John chapter 15, 
verse 7 to verse 11. Let me just verse this, read verse 11. He said, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be what? Complete. What is these things that I have spoken to you abiding in me and I went abiding in you? He said, These things I have spoken unto you so that my joy may be completed and your joy might be. So what is the first what is the first benefit of abiding in Christ? Abiding in Christ brings fullness, or it means fullness of joy. Fullness of joy. Listen, when a man abides in Christ, a woman abides in Christ, it doesn't mean there's gonna be no challenges. But in the midst of the challenges, you still have joy. <laughs> I'm not saying when you abide in Christ there's no challenge. And so when you abide in Christ, it means that there is fullness of joy. So even in the midst of challenges, you still have joy. Hallelujah. In the midst of the stress, you still have joy. Why? Because the joy that you have, the world that not given to you in the world cannot take it away from you. It doesn't matter how bad. It becomes, you still have joy. It doesn't matter how bad people treat you, you still have joy. It doesn't matter what people say to you, you still have joy. It doesn't matter who talks about you and, 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 and say all kinds of mean things about you, you still have joy. It doesn't matter who discusses you, who not discusses you, you still have joy. Because the joy comes from you abiding in Christ. And when you abide in Christ, the joy does not come from the world, the joy comes from Him. And if He gave it to you, the world can Hallelujah. The world cannot take it away. The key rests. Benefit number two. About piety in Christ. Is the joy of answer prayers. The joy of answer prayers. What does he say? He said, if you abide in me, and my word abides in you, what does he say? He said, ask whatever you will and what will happen, it shall be given unto you. Why? Because you abide in him. So abiding in Christ, that not only means fullness of joy, but it also means the joy of unsuppressed. Many people misinterpret this text and, and they think that yeah, this is a blank check that Jesus assigned for the believer. True. True. I will read first John chapter 5, verse 14. He declares this. He said, This is the confidence which we have. And so he, that if we ask anything in accordance to his will, he hears us. What is the key? The key that is to his will. Hmm? So it's, it's, not, it's, not a real, it's not a blank check after all. Your asking must be in accordance to his will. My asking will be in accordance to his will. When we look at John chapter John chapter 15 verse 7, we see there are two conditions given there, are two conditions. What are the two conditions? The first condition he says we must abide in Christ. That is, we must maintain our communion with him. Maintain our communion with him. Maintain our relationship with him. He said well, the first condition is in John 15 7 is that we must abide in Christ. What does it mean to abide? He said we must maintain our communion with him. Maintain our relationship with him. Secondly, he says his words must abide in us. The word of God must do what? Abide in us. That is, we must be consistently in his word and our life must be lived according to his word. We must live consistently 